Maxima Strangers as Strategic Warriors, Understanding Hegemonic Influence and Sustainability Practitioners in Sub-Saharan Africa by Maria Nonguka. Research Overview Sustainability is occasioned by complexity and often touted as ambiguous. Sustainability strategies are equally not properly implemented owing to most managers' inability to equate them with profits. Recent consumer pressure for companies to operate more sustainably has led to the increased need for sustainability knowledge workers who are also identified as sustainability consultants. There is a gap in understanding what role these sustainability consultants play in the strategic process, leading to the realization of intended sustainability outcomes. In particular, for institutionalization of sustainability practices, there is a need to map the sustainability practices and material artifacts favored by sustainability consultants. Strategy, however, does not take place in a vacuum. Sustainability consultants have to form collaborations in order to ease tensions that may prevent their recommendations from being taken into consideration. A similar approach highlights how relationship dynamics play out between those who are considered outsiders and the original inhabitants of a group. Strangers from George Simmel, a philosopher and sociologist, are characterized by mobility, objectivity, and abstractness. All human beings contain some characteristics that may differentiate them in relation to others. Some of these characteristics may be unchangeable, such as race, age, gender, while some may be subject to social construction that may initiate acts such as reflexivity, for example, values and beliefs. The categorization of a person as a stranger then by another is therefore inclined towards relational characteristics that the different parties possess. Human beings gravitate towards forming intimate relationships where they are comfortable to disclose their true nature. Simmel says that the unity of nearness and remoteness involved in every human relation is organized as a specific way of interaction where elements that should increase distance and repel produce a pattern of interaction and coordination. This seemingly contradiction, contradictory excerpt explains why the stranger, despite being an outsider, can form relationships within the group where he is not a native. It is his differences, whether in values or race, that make him not attached to the group and therefore objective. He therefore provides an unjudgmental perspective and is more open in dealings with the natives. The stranger, due to not being indigenous to the group, is not overly attached to it and can move between social groups therefore expanding opportunities not only for the locals but also for other strangers. An example given by Simmel is traders who are the original exemplifiers of strangers. However, not being attached to the group does not mean indifference as the stranger is classified by Simmel as one who comes today and stays tomorrow. The stranger is a member of the group without being fully a part of it. The stranger can therefore be said to exercise some degree of freedom by not being bound by traditional group conventions. Hmm. enabling him to see things from a bird's eye view. The relationship he establishes with the members of the group are based on general commonalities which are not deep and can be shared with a wider group of individuals, thus enabling him to socialize within a wider network. Due to the stranger not owning land, in Simmel's words, his mobility, which is an asset, can also be a disadvantage due to the host not trusting him. He is also limited in capacity as he is restricted by the hosts. For example, a trader is only required for goods that originate outside the group. When looking at the power of the natives, it can be said that some identities are able to construct hegemonic discourses and limit other identities' access to contribute to certain discourses. Consultants are strangers within multinational companies. Consultants can be said to have non-linear, non-fixed identities, as well they work for their client organizations. They are not part of the organization. For example, they are not privy to the norms and rituals like bonuses and pension that denominate employees. This means that they can see issues that may be deemed complex more clearly. Their mobility, both within the company, for example, amongst organizational functions and management structures, enhances their status as knowledge workers as it affords them inherent knowledge that has been shaped by enculturation as they attempt to continuously adapt to their new environments. Additionally, their social distance to issues that will be deemed to be important to particular groups of employees enables them to obtain some measure of objectivity 
which in turn enables them to foster trust with the employees within the organization, giving them access to information that will not be available to other groups. The ability of consultants to forge and maintain relationships built on trust is essential to the overall performance. Organizations are socially constructed as the day-to-day -day operations require collective actions, such as discussive aspects of negotiation and bargaining. For consultants to effectively gain the trust of their corporate co colleagues, they need to understand them in order to communicate efficiently. A major reason for failure as experienced by organizational development consultants in sub-Saharan Africa was their inability to understand the local cultures through implementation and language barriers as opposed to the strategy itself. Role of CSR Sustainability Consultants Sustainability consultants are able to acquire and share knowledge by acting as a bridge to information that will otherwise be inaccessible and providing an adequate structure for the same to take place. The mobility of sustainability consultants ensures that they experience bricolage, which is of immense use in the resolution of complex problems. The position of the consultant leads more towards an advisory role, mainly to enable managers make the right decisions when it comes to selecting strategies as they may face confusion and anxiety due to the numerous strategies from which they are required to choose only a few. This is consistent with Simmel's narrative on how strangers are limited to certain positions. When it comes to CSR and sustainability consultants in particular, their role has further been narrowed down to the translation of environmental, economic, and social concerns, champions of responsible regulation, and constructors of market boundaries. CSR sustainability consultants as mediators within multinational companies. Many multinationals find it difficult to achieve a level of cohesiveness internally required for processing, internalizing, and execution of complex socially based discipline like CSR and sustainability, which require multi level collaborations. A contributory factor is the multicultural context in which these multinational companies operate. Lack of adequate cross cultural training impedes the ability to successfully navigate this environment, leading to conflict but is neither a guarantee for smooth internal relations. Another factor is the distribution of resources which may cause interfunction struggles within the organization. In the firm's external environment, collaborations mean negotiations with other multiple host countries stakeholders to align interests which may be divergent. The socially constructed nature of CSR and sustainability disciplines also presents an element of abstractness further compounding their complexity and making it difficult to equate them with direct return on investment. In light of this, multinational companies institute mechanisms to counteract CSR and sustainability complexity that includes the hire of management consultants to streamline managerial practices and institute organizational reforms. The CSR and sustainability consultants come in as external partners with no vested interests. Being Sinelian strangers enables them to forge relationships that are not affected by functional, cultural, or positional identities. They, their discourse technologists slash knowledge worker position also make it, makes it easier for them to legitimize CSR and sustainability practices that may be under contestation. CSR and sustainability consultants power and strategy formulation. The organizational environment cannot be divorced from the political space as all interactions are carried out with an intention and a purpose with an outcome in mind. Strategy discourse in particular can assign some subjects power over others, for example, senior management, journalists and academicians are de facto granted the authority to express their opinions while other authors are deemed insignificant. Dominance play a key role in sociopolitical discourse. Dominance is rooted in admittance to special discourse and communication, which is accorded by resources such as money, status, knowledge, position, and education. Because the client will always be in a position of power relative to the consultant in spite of his expertise and competencies, it is essential for the management consultants to engage in organizational politics for their influence over their clients to be felt. Consultants in general need to be aware of the environment to ensure they are not used politically as part of a power play as this will reduce, the, reduce their credibility and to be able to anticipate changes. However, they need to form favorable relationships with the most prominent power bases as a survival strategy. Networking beforehand can be beneficial to the consultants. 
Consultants can also employ persuasive power as discourse technologies or experts to carry out negotiations with clients. This is not to say that the consultants should impose their own understanding that is prejudiced towards their social norm, which is intellectual hegemony, in an environment whose inhabitants have already socially constructed, but rather use their hybridity to engage in interdiscussivity. This is because conflicts majorly revolve around representation, factors like production, access and rights, and subjectivity, which includes naming in brackets titles and positioning. One way for CSR and sustainability consultants to mitigate conflicts induced by representation is through encouraging participation in strategic processes. Participation is cited as an instrument that allows devolution of power. Participation in strategic processes also increases transparency, which in turn increases trust that enables consultants to work efficiently with multiple groups and this in turn dispels resistance that may arise when aggrieved groups unite against the consultants. Conclusion. Impression management is counted as an essential skill that consultants should possess and this includes the ability to give the client a realistic view of how much they can achieve for the organization while neither overvaluing nor undervaluing the extent of their contribution. This will strengthen trust relations and maintain ethical standards. Strategic practices have all but taken over the space that was occupied by communicative practices and exemplifies this through examining how the most important aspects of contemporary society are colonized by promotional and advertising discourse. In essence, this leaves no recourse but to engage in negotiation in day-to-day -day relationships and therefore a need to be highly skilled in dialogue. Sustainability consultants should strive to achieve a transformational identity acquired through reflexive means that supersedes the original national identity, making them have enriched outlooks as this can be advantageously packaged as identity capital. Sustainability consultants also need to find a balance in terms of meeting their clients' expectations in an ethical manner, and this may encompass customizing their services, for example, having to put forth convincing arguments that link CSR to financial outcomes. There is a need for consultants to promote themselves as even though collaboration within CSR through stakeholder participation and social responsibility has increased the reliance on consultants, most managers still do not see why importance should be placed on social issues. Sustainability consultants are additionally needed to intensify championing activities as there is a general lack of understanding of what sustainability encompasses as evidenced by the press where it is presented in a detached tone and a distinct lack of understanding on the totality of issues. Climate change discourse is mostly driven by politicians and this in turn influences how media then frames this for publication. Sustainability issues such as climate change also do not display great reflexivity as compared to political and economic ones and therefore framing them in a stimulatory manner favored by the media is challenging. Hence, placing the bulk of the responsibility on sustainability consultants. Thank you for listening.